So in this video, we'll be taking a look at how we can ask the user for an input and then process that input and do something with it. Now, Python gives us this function called the input function. In order to actually do something with input, we could just simply run it like this and it asks for my input. So as you can see, the little cursor down there and I type something in and I click enter and it's done. Now, usually when you're using the input function, you make it meaningful. So the input function provides a way of adding some text. So in this case, let's say we were making a program where we wanted to actually ask the user for how much balance he has. Uh, we could do something like enter balance here. And now if you run it, you can just type in some kind of number like that. Now, right now it's pretty useless because we aren't really doing anything with it. And we can start by actually putting this inside a print function. Now when we run this program, we can just do that and we actually get it printed out. Now we can take this take this one step further. We can simply do my balance is and now when we run it actually we just put dollar sign. Now we run it again. We can do my balance is two dollar $234. So Something to know when you're using this print uh, this input function is if you have any code underneath like this or here or another input function that says now if you run it as you can see none of these code actually get executed because the input function waits for you to enter something if I just put something like that that's when it goes down to here and then it asks for something else just put that off so. That's something to keep note of. Now, we can have many input functions within a print statement. So let's say you want to add two numbers together. We could do input and then enter a number plus we can do that. So now when we run this, we can say two and then 4 and we get 24 now this doesn't make sense right because the way the input function works is whatever you type in the keyboard and it gets processed here it treats what you typed in as a string so this is actually a string integer and not an actual integer that's why you add these two together and you get 2 4 now this is the equivalent of this So we have our string of 2, which we entered earlier, and our string of 4. Now I'll come back to how we can solve this problem, but for now let's take a look at some other stuff we can do with input function. So typically input functions work with strings. And uh, let's say we wanted to maybe print out a specific format. So let's say we wanted to print out some basic information of a user. We could do something like name is and then have our input function called so can you say enter your name and then we can just say and is so many years old so now we can just copy this paste that in there and enter your age now if you run this, we can just enter your name, so I'm just going to say John, we can do 32, and name is John, and 32, and this 32, so I forgot to add a space here, and we don't need to do that, we can just keep it like that, now if we run it, John, and 32, and as you can see, name is John, and is 32, so this is a cool way of combining inputs with print statements, now there's another way we can do this, and this one goes back to the second episode where we talk about printing. Now we can have things like, so his name is name, and he is age. He lives in place. 
so we have these text uh, wrapped around in curly braces so obviously we would want to use the format because that's the special placeholder text now we can have inputs so that it replaces these with the correct information so since our first one is called name we can do name equals that and we can make a second one called age and we can do enter your age and we can have a third one called place and do enter your place now if we run this we have our name we have our age and we can just say Viking land and it prints out his name is John and he's 32 he lives in Viking land now let's go back to that part where I talked about adding strings with uh, strings and numbers so we had something like this so enter a number and another one enter a number so if you run this obviously we would get 23 now to solve this problem we would need to convert this input into the actual type so in order to add two numbers together we need to make sure that whatever the user types in here is an integer so we can do that using the int function and wrap it around the input so whatever is inside the int, int function it gets converted into an integer and the same thing in here so if you run this we go 2 and 3 we get 5 so this is the equivalent of this and that is 2 and 5 sorry that's supposed to be 3 so 2 and 3 and then it's it ends up being that if I comment this using control Q in notepad plus plus and I run this we would get 5 so that's how this int function works now let's say we wanted to strictly keep everything in string so even if the user adds a string we wanted to add it like 23 uh, 2 3 instead of 5 we could simply do str now this is a little bit redundant because whatever the user puts in here becomes a string anyway but I'll just show you so we have a 3 and 4 we have 3 4 and not 34 and I can prove it to you that this is actually a string by simply putting this in the type function and what the type function does is it basically gives us what type it is so if I put 2 and 3 whoops right so let me just get rid of this over here we don't need that now if I print this out we get it's a class of string and string is represented using the str now you don't have to worry about what a class is for now but just think of this function as it tells you whether it's a string or an, in an integer if I do int and I put 2 it's an int so now if we have something like this we have a string number and we have a whoops we have a integer number and we have a string number so that does it for this video now in the next video we'll take a look at how we can use variables in our program